We're seeing some very big clusters growing in aged care and very vulnerable populations and that is of concern. New South Wales and Victoria will be shutting down their borders uh, from midnight tomorrow night. Unless you are returning home to Queensland or you are coming to Queensland for an essential purpose, then the border is closed to you. I remember it was around September 2020 and the Prime Minister called me. The call was about uh, a young woman um, being allowed to come into Queensland and uh, go to uh, a funeral. I appealed to her on this occasion to provide an exemption for this young woman to be able to attend that funeral. And she said, I can't. I told him I did not have the powers to do that. And I said, well, you can. Um, oh, the Chief Health Officer says this and I have to do what she says. Well, no, you don't. You're the Premier. She works for you. He said, this will break you. Um, you need to do this. You must approve this. And it was, uh, it, was, it was threatening language. I felt extremely threatened. I made no threat about it. I, I, I was I speaking to you, spoke to her like I'm speaking to you now. I said to him, look, if you go down this path, I believe that there could be death threats that would come from this. Uh, to which he replied, I get death threats all the time. Premier Palaszczuk told me, quote, it was brutal, it was disrespectful, it was threatening, unquote. What's your response to that version of events? I don't accept it at all. I don't accept it at all. Um, at, look, at the end of the day, the Queensland Premier proved in, in the sort of, I'd call it the second or third phase of National Cabinet to be the most political. I actually hung up. Um, it's the first time I've ever done that. And it stuck with me and has had a firm impression on me and I think it also expresses the way in which um, he may treat women. As Secretary of Prime Minister and Cabinet, I'd always seen somebody who was domineering, um, whose relationship with the female members of his Cabinet left a lot to be desired. I just don't think he ever really valued women's perspectives. Look, from my, my perspective, um, his Pentecostal beliefs and his strict religious beliefs were certainly overlaid on his attitude towards women. He has a, a really weak, if no regard, particularly bizarre um, for working women with children. Um, you know, and I witnessed and observed and heard that from women who had worked with him a lot more and a lot more closely than I had. Um, so women who had challenged him or who weren't going to stay silent, such as, such as myself, um, we left. Do you think you have a problem with women? I, I don't. And my professional record of how, where I've worked and how I've worked over my entire life, I, I don't think indicates that at all. Prime Minister Morrison uh, chaired a cabinet which had the largest number of women sitting around the table in Australian history. I don't think that was, uh, the credit was given where credit was due. I genuinely don't think he had an issue with women. He did surround himself by men. That was Alex Hawke, Stuart, Robert and Ben Morton. Now, it's not clear to me which women, if any, he listened to. I mean, clearly his wife, fine, but in terms of parliamentary um, colleagues, um, the, the closest were all male. If Scott Morrison had included more women or any women in his inner circle, I believe that would have affected every single decision that was made. Australia Post Chief Executive Christine Holgate will be forced to stand aside after the federal government ordered an investigation into the purchase of $12,000 worth of luxury watches for senior executives. And if the Chief Executive wishes to stand aside, well not wishes to stand aside, she's been instructed to stand aside, and if she doesn't wish to do that, Mr Speaker, she can go. I had a lot of concerns 
uh, about how that was handled. Um, Christine Holgate had not breached any policy of her organisation, uh, but had been effectively sacked on the floor of Parliament by the Prime Minister. All I was seeking to have happen is for the Chief Executive to stand aside while Australia Post did an investigation into this and brought back their findings. And my view was, well, I think my request is quite reasonable. And if she's not prepared to accept that, well, she can go. Now, I said that with a bit more uh, force in the parliament and probably could have taken a glass of water beforehand. I think it's one of the worst acts of bullying I've ever witnessed. It is an utter disgrace. It was ridiculous, you know. We don't go into a public forum and berate another person. That is a conversation on the phone with them, not in the chamber. Not, you know, because that's starting looking too presidential. You're looking too, you know, I'm the you know, boss here and, and, and people find it threatening. You know, they don't like it. It was a difficult time for the government. We had a number of issues or scandals hit us. Tonight on Four Corners, we go inside the Canberra bubble. There was the ABC documentary which aired allegations against senior cabinet ministers. And then Brittany Higgins's allegations of sexual assault within the parliament. 